In the previous two videos, we have covered different type of platforms, one-way platform and self-destruct platform. And now we are here to continue the series with our third and final type, the moving platform, which is one of the most popular type of platforms in any game. And it can be further classified between closed and open moving platform based on their path. Now, as always, we are going to dive into the core concept before putting our hands into the implementation. So, many of you may have already guessed it that I'm going to use a Path2D node to create the path and then move a platform along with it. And congratulations, you hit the jackpot. But the main thing is whether to use a static body or a character body for the platform. And the answer is none of them. You may have noticed that when you create a platform from them, the player is not sticking on the platform. And it get even worse in case of vertical movement when the player get inside or start to leave the platform. Now if this was Godot 3, then solving it was a bit challenging. But Godot 4 added a special node just for handling moving objects smoothly like this platform. And it is none other than Animatable Body 2D. Now you may say, okay, I get it. I will first add a Path 2D node to create the path. Then I will add a Path Follow node and under it there will be this Animatable Body 2D. And now all I have to do is move this platform by changing it the progress ratio through animation player. But, but, when you will run it, it looks like it is moving. But in reality, the platform is still in its original position. And I can even show you by colliding with it. But you know what's the funny part? If I turn on visible collision shape, I can clearly see that the collision shape is moving. But still I am able to collide with it. Now there is a possibility that it can be a bug in Godot. But anyway, after going through the docs, I found that in animatable body, we should change its position through animation player. So I thought maybe because this animatable body is a child of path follower node. And as we know, it is the path follower that actually moves in the path. So position of the animatable body is never changed. So to solve this, instead of directly placing our animatable body under the path follow, I will move it directly under the root and place a remote transform 2D node under the path follow. Now what this remote transform 2D does, it will take its current position and send it to some other node in the tree. So in the inspector, you will see we need to put a remote path or in simple words, we need to select the node which we want to send the data. So for that, I can simply select the animatable body node. And now it will work as expected. Alright, let's just quickly build this thing. So in your empty scene, first add path 2 d node for the root and under it, add one path follow and animatable body node. Then in the path 2 d let's define a curve. This is just for the setup purpose and I will remove it later. So I'll just draw a simple line. Then under the path follow, add one remote transform 2 d And in the inspector, set its remote path and choose our animatable body. Now under animatable body, we will add one sprite and one collision shape. Then expand the collision shape to cover the entire sprite. And finally to move all of this, we will need one animation player node. So after that, we can just create a new animation. Now we head over to path follow node and create a keyframe for progress ratio. Then I'll set the duration of the animation to 2 seconds and bring the pointer there. After that, I'll change the progress ratio to 1 and create a keyframe again. Now in the animation, click on this icon 2 times and it will change like this. It means our animation will play backward once it has reached the end. After that, double click on the first keyframe and here you can now see the easy. So double click on the graph and set the value to negative 1.56. By doing that, the animation will now slow down at the starting and end, which make it perfect for open path platform. Next, we will create a script to control everything. So first of all, we will define some variables. One is for telling if the path is closed or open and one value for speed. Then I will store the path follow and animation player node in a variable. Now inside the process function, we will take progress from the path follow and increase it with some value, which we have defined as a speed. Now if you select the path follow node, then in the inspector, if I try to increase its value by dragging this handle, you will notice that as soon as the path follow reached the end, it reset its position back to zero and it start over again. And that's exactly the same thing we are doing here. Now you may have guessed it that this will work perfect for a close path. So that's why in the ready function, we will check if the loop is turned on or not. And if it is not, then it is an open path. So in that case, we can run our animation that we created earlier. 
Then similar to closed path, we should also have some way to control the speed in open path. And luckily our animation player have a property which we can use. And it is called speed scale. So I'm gonna create one more variable called speed scale and set the default value to 1. Now here we will simply set our animation player speed scale to our speed scale value. Now if we know that it is an open path then there is no need for the process function to run. So that's why we will set our process to false. And that's it. Just click on the root node and you can see all the different settings are here. You can also remove this dummy curve and save the scene. Now just add this moving platform in your game. Then create a new curve. And draw whatever path you want. Now let me add one more platform in this game and I will create an open path this time. Now for the settings, I uncheck this loop because it is an open path and similarly for the first one, I will leave this one checked. Now if you want to change its speed, you can do that by changing the speed value. Similarly for the open platform, you need to change speed scale value. Just run the game and enjoy your moving platforms. So that's it for this video. Now that you have mastered creating moving platform in Code of 4, go ahead and experiment with different path and speed to create dynamic gameplay experience. If you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.